man. How come you get to interview all the good-looking ones? Luck of the draw, I guess, but we're here at uh, Sebring 2010, uh, the sixth annual running of this, and we have Skycatcher number one, SLSA number one. Of course, there have been some uh, uh, prototypes that they worked with, but this particular one is owned by Rose Pelton, who's standing with me and who has kindly given permission for us to get in her personal airplane. She's not just a representative of the company here. This is her airplane, so that's pretty cool. How did that all come about? Like, I mean, how do you get... Number one off of the line. Oh, I don't know. Maybe it's some similarity to the last name, but maybe I ought to ask you that. I have a great connection. And, yeah. and, and so who did you go ask to be able to have serial I, number one? I actually asked uh, my husband Jack over dinner. <laughs> over dinner, yes. yes. Did you cook the dinner? I did not. All Never right. E out. Even better. So, yeah. so Jack Pelton's wife is Rose Pelton, but it's her airplane. It's not Jack's airplane. That's I'm right. guessing that's right, isn't it? That's correct. Cool. Are you a pilot now, Rose? I am not. This is my Learn to Fly airplane. My first lesson was the day of delivery on uh, December 18th. I've been up for 16 hours now, and nine of those were flying here. Is that right? Yes. Oh, you flew here in the airplane I then. did. Excellent, yeah. excellent. Well, 16 hours, you're getting close to the numbers you need. There you go, That's I right. know. That's right, pretty cool. No, we don't often get women involved in aviation. Is this something you've been sort of had an itch to do for a while? I have. We actually have a few airplanes, and I just feel it's comfortable for me. You know, I should know how to land the airplane, how to fly the airplane, understand the airplane. So I think once I got in the demo, I thought, wow, this is the right airplane for me, and maybe I can learn to fly this one. And it is your goal to get the sport pilot certificate, is it not? It's actually my goal to get my pilot certificate. Okay, your private pilot. My private, private pilot. Private pilot. All right, cool. So Jack went out and designed an airplane just so his wife could experience aviation and then start to grow it. I well, think he thought a little bit more of other people, <laughs> not just me. Well, sell Rose one, and then you'll sell another 900 and, or 1,000 or however many it's up to That's now. right. <laughs> okay, then. Well, we'll get on with some work here, then. All right. Okay, Dan, you're the president of LAMA, and you now got Cessna in line. Yeah, what do you know, Dave? That's pretty cool. Not only Cessna, but Rose's own airplane. That's kind of cool, I think, so. Now, we just did uh, an interview with you with Rose, but you've now had an opportunity to sit in this and go through the control system there. What's your feeling on the airplane? Well, you know, I mean, it's it's a Cessna in the way it flies, so I've been told. I'm still waiting for my chance to do it, but it's got some not Cessna stuff to it. For example, the thing that catches most people's eye right off the bat is this unusual joystick combination. But as before I pull the control lock, I want to observe something for your camera here that's kind of cool. You cannot take this airplane off with the control lock in because right behind it, let me remove this here, is the key is the key uh, ignition. So with that in, there's no way you could take this airplane off and have that in place. And that's kind of a nice little, just a little minor thing, but it's a nice thing. So I'll put that on the floor here now, or down in the. It's got two cup holders in it too. It's a big deal in aviation, you know. We're not used to having cup holders, but these guys are on their game. So I'll put the uh, control lock down there now. Now, the control system is totally different than anything else that I've, I've seen before. I have never, ever seen a stick like this. Come on in here with your camera. It looks like a yoke, except there's not two sides to it, and it doesn't turn. What it does is it comes in and out for elevator, of course. Just that. That's just as conventional as it can be, although you can feel there's a little curvature when you do it. And part of that is because... Here's the other neat feature about it. The stick goes side to side for, of course, your aileron control. The beauty of that is there's nothing here between my legs, nothing to prevent me from getting in and out, stretching a little bit, and I think that's kind of a nice feature. Now, it looks like they've gone to a glass panel on this as well. This is the uh, Garmin 300 series that was developed initially just for Cessna. And this is the dual screen version, I believe. I'm quite sure that it comes standard for the base price with a single. But, of course, the single screen in this uh, configuration will show anything you want with some button pushing. But it's a nice, clean look to it. They've shown Nexrad over here now because you can, with uh, some extra options, you can have all that feature as well. And then, of course, they're using the Garmin radio stack in the center. Nice little arrangement to the panel. And I kind of like also this slope down to the panel so that when you've got somebody with you here, they can see out just a little bit better. Panels, pilots are used to the panel being up high, and I can see over it just fine. But some people kind of find that, wow, why do you put all that in the way? Not over here. Now, throttle arrangement looks like throttle's in the center. Yep, throttle, mixture on both sides here. Carb heat on the left, closest to the pilot. That's probably appropriate. Cabin heat on the right, and it's a pull-on, just like any Cessna you've ever seen. They're going to be a little hard to see up here because they're, they're the same color as the interior, but you've got an air vent here and one over on the other side that your camera won't show. 
So you can get a bunch of fresh air coming into you as well as some cabin heat. And it looks like if you go back to the fuel gauge, they've gone back uh, a very simple uh, fuel gauge again. Yeah, the good old sight gauge, except, you know, done Cessna style here. Then Instead of just having a gauge and you sort of figure out where it's at or they draw some lines on it with a magic marker or something, they've got a nice little plate that sits right in front of it that shows you the amount. I can glance at this and see I'm a little over quarter tanks on this side and a little less than quarter tanks on that side. Because they just flew this in from uh, the factory. Rose herself flew the thing in here. That's uh, with a, with an instructor, of course, but uh, pretty cool that the boss's wife flew to the air show. There's not too many companies that'll say that. Okay. Now, the other thing is, Dan, uh, Dan, Rose is a little shorter than you. How did she adjust for getting in her, uh, the seat now? you got to wonder, because the seats don't move. But down here on the floor, if you can bring your camera in here a little bit, I'm going to lean over. There's a big black knob down here, if you've got that. And when I dial that, you can see those pedals move. Very readily, very easy. That's taken no force for me to do that at all. And because you can easily, now with my leg back inside, I can reach down here and I can adjust that no problem while flying. So you've got the ability to move the pedals, which takes place of the seat. And the seat, by the way, they look kind of slim, but this has given me a good support to it. So thanks to their design, uh, I believe you could sit in this airplane just as long as Rose did, or maybe even longer. The other thing, the flap arrangement on this is what, between the seats? Yeah, it's a, between the seats, a Johnson bar, great big sturdy looking thing with a button on the end that wasn't perfectly obvious to me at first because it's nicely tapered. But as you press in on the button, bring it all the way up, or of course let it out and you'll hear the, hear the various clicks as it goes through. So it's a one, two, three position, plus neutral. It looks like a lot of storage area behind. Yeah, it's got like uh, somebody said, it's got acres of room back here. Well, that may be a little bit generous, but uh, certainly a lot of room to put stuff back here. And it could be fairly bulky, and you do have some tie down capabilities in here. I see some parts that you could use to tie down, secure your luggage. And it looks like visibility out of the back's excellent as well. You've got that, uh, actually, three rear windows on it. Yeah, you do. You've got ones on the side. Now, they're, I think they're mostly for looks. I can see things out of there, but I'm looking kind of down, although that would be good for traffic, let's say in the pattern when banking and whatnot. But with this big one out the back, I can see, I could move the rudder pedals right now, and I could see what was going on. In order to see the uh, aileron or the elevator, I'm going to have to lean out a little bit, but that'd be easy to do during a pre-flight check, what with these nice gull wing doors that go right up to the base of the wing. And they are held up here by a piston on each side, so no problem getting in and out with a nice big strap to pull it back in. I kind of like that too. Sometimes it's a little hard to get a hold of the door. Now this is going to be available then through, I guess, flight training centers uh, that Cessna already has? Well, I think uh, they'll, uh, Cessna has two programs. They've got the Cessna Pilot Centers. They mostly do training, and that's where a lot of these things are going. And then they've got their C-Star, Cessna Sales Team Authorized Representatives. They're the ones that actually sell the airplanes. But uh, I think roughly half and half, or maybe a little less than half of these are going to CPCs. So that accounts for a lot of their 1,040 sales orders that they've taken. I believe that's a close number. But that also means that an awful lot of them are just going to individuals. And you can start naming some folks off that are using these. The guys that are getting numbers two and three are our friends up at EAA, and they're going to be using them for Young Eagles flight. So that's kind of a neat thing that's happening, too. Okay. So if somebody wanted to get uh, some more information on it, where would they go? Well, you go to Cessna.com, but Cessna.com has obviously got a lot of stuff on it. So then you look for the single engine link, and once you click on the single engine link, right on the home page there, very easy to find, then you click on Skycatcher and you get all the information about this airplane. Now, have you done a flight report on this one, Dan? I have not. They offered me one, and I had a meeting I had to go to, so I had to take a pass, but I'm dying for the opportunity. It has been written up, and as soon as I get my chance, it'll appear on my site which is bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com.